guys got a short little two eagles garage video here for you this week um i do apologize for it being so long that i posted a video but we've had some sicknesses and stuff like that i planned on getting started back at the beginning of the year but we all got COVID at the beginning of the year so we're slowly recovering from that but we're getting back on track and i'm uh gonna put some more videos out soon like i said today's just gonna be a real short video i had a request to make a video from a man by the name of mr john gearhart buddy i hope i'm pronouncing that right and um he wanted to know on this kawasaki bayou here yeah you have to excuse the angle of it i'm doing some work up under the bottom I'll give you a brief glimpse of that in just a minute. But he wanted to know where the fuel lines went to on the carburetor. So, I try to keep my fans happy and keep my subscribers happy. So, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. Mr. Gearhart, mine has a shutoff valve right here and you got a fuel line right here where my finger is. I'll get some more light. Give me one second. See the fuel line going from the shutoff valve right there? Goes down to this port on the side of the carburetor right here. If you can see where my finger's pointing, it goes right here. All right, this pink line right here is just an overflow line. All it does is follow down the frame right here and go down to somewhere where you can drain it out. There we go, see? Yeah, it just goes down to the frame down there for an overflow, like if your needle's stuck or something. It'll overflow and there's a bottom one down here The bottom one right here on the bottom of the carburetor That is a drain for your bowl on your carburetor There's a screw on the other side over there that you open up and that drains your bowl out And this right here is your adjustment your idle adjustment That's about it for the fuel lines man And some of them come with these pink fuel lines when you buy them and some of them don't This is a brand new carburetor on this four-wheeler by the way And uh that's exactly how it's supposed to be set up. All your hoses and everything. If you have any more further any, any further questions, bud, just let me know. I mean, I don't mind answering all your questions. I know some of you had asked before what size this full wheeler was, and to be honest, I'm not real sure. I know it's bigger than my little uh, one over here because that one's only a 185. I think this one's a 220. Not positive, but I think it's a 220. Let me see if I can get an eye on the tag on it. I know it's up here somewhere. See, this one, the plastics and other labels, it's got some labels on it, but not many. I know it's the Kawasaki Bayou, but it's got a lot of wiring issues, and it's got a lot of other issues as well. This right here is one of the biggest reasons I haven't fixed this boiler yet. So I'm genius broke off the oil drain plug, just busted it off. And then JB welded a bolt up in there. I didn't know he had JB welded that bolt in there and I went to take it out to do an oil change on it and it fell out in my hand. So I'm thinking I can use this. It still leaks right now. I couldn't get it not to leak like this. I've got some Aluma weld rods over there that I'm going to use there from Harbor Freight, of course. So we're going to see how it goes. I'm not spending a lot of money on this boiler, guys. I've got $85 in this boiler, and that's it. So I'm not spending a whole lot of money on it. I, if I was going to restore it, yeah, I'd spend the money on it, but I just need it for something to beat around with in the woods. But I'm going to try to JB weld it right here at the base. Not JB weld, but Aluma weld it right here at the base where these threads are because it is threaded. I did put some threads in there. And then I'm going to cut it off right here, even with these threads, and try to put some sort of pipe tap or something in it. If you guys can see that real good. I don't know how the lighting situation is. But it's got decent tires on it. I mean, the tires are pretty decent. Give me a second and I'll look and see if I can find the serial number. should be right here. I'll have to excuse the mess. We've been doing some cleaning up here. This is a Kawasaki... I got the serial number now, but I can't tell by it what I have to research what year and what size it is. Let me see if it says on the body over here, because my other one has a white tag that tells the serial number and what size it is. This one doesn't really tell as easy. 
And like I said, guys, this folder, I would restore it, but this folder is beat all to pieces. I mean, whoever had it just slap beat it. Buy you on it. See, I got two of them here. I got one here. Like I said, this one's a 185. And it's a good running little folder. But it needs a shifter rod. It needs a shifter rod that goes through the engine. This little piece right here, matter of fact. Somebody ground that down after the shifter broke off. And it would no longer seal around the seal. So I took it out and was going to buy another one. Well, nobody makes those parts. Nobody reproduces them. Nobody makes them. Nobody can get them. No, nothing. So I'm going to have to custom build that particular part for this boiler. But other than that, this engine on this boiler right here runs immaculately. I mean, it runs like you wouldn't believe. Uh, yeah, it don't have any labels on the fenders or anything as to what size it is. I want to say it's a 220, but I'm not 100% sure. But I mean, like I said, I've got some work going on with it. Two 2 by 6s is holding it up in my shop right here on a chain hoist. I mean, this one just needs a lot. I contemplated getting rid of this one, but I want to finish it and fix it for you guys. But I'm gonna do it without dumping a whole lot of money into it. As you can see, I've already got most of the wiring and stuff done, got all everything labeled. And I could put it back together right now, and it does run, but it leaks oil like crazy. I mean, it's, it's a good running pole. A little pole that runs good, but it just leaks too bad to be able to use it. That, and when I took the oil, when I changed the oil in it, it had metal shavings in the oil. I don't know if somebody may have put zinc in it and made it look like that, or if maybe the jug on the cylinder's gone. The guy that I got it from told me, he said they run it until that exhaust pipe was red hot. I don't know if they were running it on racing fuel. I don't know what they were doing with it. But he said it got hot. And I've had it run, and it runs good. I also have to fix the pull cord piece of it. But, I mean, it's got a lot of uh, locking differential in it. I mean, it's got a lot of neat features, and it's a nice bowler. Everything works on it. It just needs some work and needs some love like everything else. And I'll go ahead, and in this video, I'll give you guys an update on the mower we got here, the little zero-turn mower. I got the motor put back together, the end put back together with the new carburetor. It's on and it runs great, no issues. I got the fuel tank fixed. By the way, that shiny spot right there on the fuel tank just above my finger, that is Gorilla Glue. If you ever have a fuel tank that needs a repair in it, get you some Gorilla Glue and put on it. I did use clear fuel line from Home Depot. It's just uh, clear plastic lines, all it is, and it works great. Now this one has to have a lot of electrical work as well. Because for some reason, I get, everything I get has to have electrical work on it. Which is fine, I love to do electrical work. Um, I had to hot wire it, number one, which is why the green wire is here. But um, I had to hot wire, hot wire it. And what you do is you take this wire and you grab, I think it was this pink wire right here. Well, what color is that? I don't know what color that is. It looks like a olive colored wire with a red stripe. I want to say, but you connect these two together and this is your power for the whole mower. This is your ground. Connect it here and it'll, then you touch it to one of these and it'll start the mower up. I have to redo it again because I forget what colors do which. But I got to, as you can see, I've got to put new ends on some of it. It needs a new switch. The switch is no good. These need pinned back into the connector. And I mean, it's just a wiring nightmare. Because a lot of wires have been cut, like this one right here has been cut, and I don't know what it's for. And I don't know if the transmission or the PTO clutch works on this one. Because the PTO clutch wasn't hooked up when I got it. So I've got it hooked up. i got to get my power probe out here. And I can... Um, Check it and see if it works with a power probe. Because you can put power to it and see if it'll click. Um, I also don't know if the transmission works. Because it has no drive belt on it. The only belt it has with it is the deck belt. So there's no drive belt. 
and this is a hydraulic system, but it uses belts to turn the hydraulic motors. So I don't know if that works. I do still have the deck for it. The deck is outside. And I do have a John Deere sitting outside that we'll get an update on as well soon. I'm Once again, I'm stuck at trying to get parts for everything. If this needs a PTO clutch, it's almost $200. And it, it's worth it because it's got a Kawasaki engine on it. It's got a Kawasaki 15 horse engine on it. I mean, I could make four or $500 off of this mower if I finish cleaning it up real good. This one, you know, like I said, I still need to put that oil piece in the bottom of it. It needs parts as well. Once again, the price of everything and getting everything is what's slowing me down on these projects. Because, you know... Guys, I don't have a supporter in my channel. I do it all myself. So I have to do what I can when I have the money. My daughter's hula hoop, by the way. So I have to do things when I have the money. And um, I'm also still trying to stop my shop with stuff that I need and stuff like that. So I'm having to do it project by project and piece by piece as easily as I can. Because I don't have the money readily available to go out and drop two or $300 on parts. For example... My F100 sitting out there. That truck, the engine needs to come out of it, and it needs a new gasket kit put in it. While I've got it out, I want to put rings and stuff in it. But I can't do that right now because the re-ring kit for it, if I get it locally, is over $300. I found a, a place on eBay where I could get one for $112, so that's going to be my next step for that. And we do have another addition to the shop. I went and got a new Husky toolbox because I got tired of trying to stuff all my tools in that toolbox, which the top half is sitting back there. And I got an ultrasonic cleaner for Christmas. So we'll see how that works too. I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, this toolbox is awesome. I mean, I got all my tools kind of organized in here. It's not the most perfect organization, but I mean, I'm working on that. I've never had the advantage of being able to organize a toolbox. So this is the first time I've ever been able to organize my toolbox and actually have everything in its own place. Some of these ranches in here, guys, are very expensive ranches. Like this one right here, at one point in time, that was an expensive ranch. This one was too. I think I've got a few snap-on ranches laying around here too. I've got a few popular mechanics ranches, which you know, if you know anything about cars, you know those are antiques now. And not many people sell them. And it's got a really deep drawer on the bottom for all kind of different stuff, timing lights. I got an impact socket set there. And up top here, got screwdrivers and pliers. You know, it's just a really nice toolbox. This is an empty drawer. I've got to finish my liner in it and get stuff put in it. Got crimp, crimpers and torque wrench and more pliers up here. Those are hose pliers and an engraver. And then up here, I've got all my wiring stuff, my cutters, my strippers, my antifreeze testers, my spark testers, and I've got all this up here. The blue thing is a air pressure tester. Got for Christmas as well, and it's got a top up here too. I won't open it because it's got stuff sitting on top of it. But it, it, it's got a lot of space in it. I'm happy with it. I can roll it over to the door of my shop, get my work done, roll it back over here where it needs to go. So that's perfect. And we did get our leaf blower repaired yeah, I put a new carburetor on it from Amazon once again guys if you need a carburetor for something and you need a cheap one get it from Amazon Amazon has cheap carburetors I paid I think between 10 and 15 dollars for that carburetor and it runs perfectly my only issue was the handle right here it needed another slot cut on the side of it for it to fit I didn't bother with it. I just took and pounded it on with a hammer. I mean, you could order the one that goes with the carburetor you find online, but I got this for free and it works great. So I'm happy with that. I use it every year. I've also still got a tire changer here I've got to put up, but I want to put it up outside because I don't want to end my way in here in the shop. It is a Harbor Freight tire machine, a tire changer as well. I do have an air operated tire machine, but it is in very very disrepair so i've got to get it all taken apart new hoses everything put back together and there's some parts i have to find for it 
I cannot find parts for that particular tire machine anywhere. And I have searched everywhere because I got it for free. The guy that gave it to me, somebody stole the arm that goes over the tire. Like you set the tire down and you run the nut down to hold it. You do that and that holds the wheel and tire and then you have the piece up top that comes down and pops that bead and then you have the piece on bottom that pops that bead. Well, the piece on top that pops the upper bead is missing completely. There's nothing left there at all. I mean, it's completely missing. So I've got to figure that out. We do have a chainsaw here I'm going to work on in the future this year as well. Guys, I don't know when I'm going to get to these things. I'm going to try to get to this one soon because I know that this one just needed a carburetor. I used it years and years ago, but it was a nightmare to get it running and it would not stay running. It didn't really smoke much, but it would not stay running. It is a two cycle. So we're gonna investigate that because I'm gonna use it a few times and then that's gonna get sold. Cause I've got a big Husqvarna chainsaw and I've got a big McCulloch chainsaw. Uh, that's a little Poland. Yeah, it says Craftsman. It's not a Craftsman, it's a Poland. I don't need a Poland. This is my ultrasonic cleaner. I got it for Christmas. This is from Harbor Freight. I will let you guys know how well that works because we've got a few carburetors I'm going to dip down in it. So we'll see how that goes. And I'll do a review on it as well. You guys look for the video upcoming on the review and we'll go from there. I've also, this right here is my carburetor station. This is my carburetor toolbox. I do everything carburetors on it. Yeah, you know, I got my bench here. Yeah, it needs cleaned up. This is all falling apart. But yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of cleaning up to do, and I've got a lot of other things to do as well. But guys, I'm trying to get these videos out for you. It takes me several hours to edit these videos and get them posted because, like I said, I'm doing all this through my phone. I did get a new camera for Christmas, which I will be doing a video with it soon. So I would like you guys to give me your feedback and your opinion on how the sound and everything is on that video. If you guys wouldn't mind, I would appreciate your help and your feedback. Let me know how these videos are doing. Let me know what you like. Let me know your dislikes. And guys, to let you know, I'm not a professional mechanic. I've been doing this since I was eight years old. I just know how to do stuff. I have a knowledge of almost everything. I'm a jack of all trades, but I'm a master of none. Okay? I, I know there's a lot more to that saying. Don't bust my chops for that. But, um... I also wanted to go over with you guys today. If you get from Home Depot one of these seats right here, it's called the Win. It's got the toolbox drawers on front of it. These I added, so overlook that. And it's got the tray and the two side pieces. Do not buy that from Home Depot. I bought this thing from Home Depot, and within two weeks, the casters broke off of it. So I put those on there hoping it would work. Did not work. This will be up for sale soon. So, we'll get it in a minute, okay? Go play. Sorry, guys, that was my daughter. She was asking me a question. But yeah, don't buy this. It's no good. You know, it's got good holes over here on the side to put parts. I mean, the drawers are good. Everything's good about it except for those casters. If you buy one, buy it on sale. And buy it with the intention of putting new casters on because those casters are no good because they're an allen bolt that holds the casters on and they just go straight through to the caster well, that allen bolt wears the threads out and it wore them completely out and they were unable to hold at all so that's that I'm, I'm just giving you guys a little shop tour here you know I haven't done a shop tour really very much trying to show you guys what all I've got to work with I do have a shop vac. We're going to be doing some repairs on here in a little while. I've got my air tool station over here. It's got my air compressor, my hose, and just random tools hanging up on the door. A little sand blaster from Harbor Freight. We can do a video on that too. But these are the cabinets. I have, you know, like my fluid storage and parts up here and wire brushes and lights and stuff like that. Down here, I've got all of my electrical and my usable supplies like o-rings and wire connectors and heat shrink rolls of wire rolls of hose i've got my two electrical testers soldering irons a small dremel tool which is more afraid this thing sucks don't buy it it's one of their drill masters the tiny one this thing is horrible don't buy it it's got no torque 
you know, alligator clips and stuff like that, hose clamps. And this voltmeter right here is an antique as well. This was my father's. I haven't seen one of these in a very long time, and when I did see them, they were not cheap. You know, I've got trailer wire. I mean, I've got all kinds of stuff, guys. And this cabinet I call my Harbor Freight tool cabinet because it's got all kind of Harbor Freight stuff in it, an AC pump, which I still need to get you guys that video for my rodeo AC pump. I've got the Freon. I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. I had some more difficulties with the AC system. Not really the AC system, but the blend door. See, the cables on that blend door are no longer replaceable. Nobody has them. So I've got to get creative and figure out how to build me a set of cables for the bit of the blender door. Got flaring tools, soldering kit, bushing set, a new carburetor. Well, practically new, it's used. But guys, this carburetor is over $600 at Summit. I gave... 150 for it, I think. And the guy said they took it off a running and driving truck. Said he just took it off to put, um, I think it was fuel injection. This one was on one of these carburetors. See, I've got a Holly four barrel too. One of them a guy took off because somebody told him it was a carburetor and it wasn't. And all it needed was a tune up and some wires and plugs and stuff. So this one was a good steal. And then the other one I gave $50 for the Holly four barrel. I've got brake pad kits, I've got uh, steering wheel pullers, brake bleeder kits, pipe expanders, piston ring compressors, compression test kit, that timing gear puller right there, does that come from AutoZone? And I had to buy that. When I worked on my rodeo and put a harmonic balancer on it, you cannot get that harmonic balancer off without that tool, unless you make a tool for it. You know, I've got various different tools, I've got a stud welder up there which i'll be using soon you know just all kind of different stuff guys i'm trying to fill you guys in on what all i'm doing and what all i've got this is a four cylinder engine out of a 95 chevrolet s10 i do have a 95 chevrolet s10 and i've got almost everything to rebuild this engine i've got pistons i've got gaskets all i needed was the bearings the rings new connecting rods and i was able to put it back together but i think i've decided to go and put a V8 in that truck. I haven't been able to start on it yet. That one's going to be maybe a few years down the road. But this one right here, somebody did not put water in it and overheated it to the point where it didn't seize the engine, but it welded the piston rings to the pistons. I tried to knock them off with a chisel and couldn't knock them off. But the cylinders are perfect. All they need is home. All they need. And it's a 2.2 for a Chevrolet. So, I mean, it's a little tough engine. Got my torches over here. But all right, guys, I'm going to pause it here real quick, and I'll get back to you as soon as I get out to the other lawnmower, and I'll give you an update on it, and then we're going to close this video out. Guys, I appreciate you watching, and please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and, you know, keep following me for upcoming videos. I've got a lot more coming. I did have that toolbox, too, but as you can see, it's crammed full. But, I mean, I've got projects coming up, guys. I'm just trying to get parts to me. You know, like I said, some of it's money. But also some of it is getting the parts to me. I can't get everything I need within a certain time frame. And there's my McCulloch I was telling you about. Yeah, I know. I'm like a kid on Tourette's today. I'm, you just got to follow along, guys. But yeah. If you ever need to work on the bottom of a four-wheeler, two two-by-sixes and two trees... Or a building like this right here works perfect. Maybe in the near future I can get us a shop built. But we're going to see about that. You know, I'm just going to build one from a little carport or something. But yeah, that's about what we're doing. Alright, I'm going to pause you here. I'll be back. Guys, I also got the interior stripped out of this. And I'm getting ready to fix the rusted floor pan in it. I do have a new floor pan. I do have another fender right there. But that's another project I'll show you around for another time. It needs a good bit of work, but it's there. And of course, you see I'm powering my shop with drop cords right now. The lights that are in my shop, me and my daughter wired those up. My daughter helped me put those lights up. And guys, do excuse the wobbling. I do walk with a cane. I think I've mentioned this before. See, I'm also doing all this 
as well as being handicapped. And you know, I don't mention very much about being handicapped, but I do walk with a cane, as you can see. Um, not nothing because of anything I've done in life or anything like that. I was born with a disability. I had no choice. And, um, you know, I do this, these videos to help other people, you know, just cause you're disabled doesn't mean that you can't do anything. If you're disabled and can still walk and move your body, heck, I don't care if you're in a wheelchair, you can do something. There's ways to figure it out. For 12 years of my life or more, I spent in cast and what they call a fixtures. And it rendered me to where I couldn't walk. So I was having to figure out how to do stuff in a wheelchair. I was having to figure out different ways to get creative and do stuff. And I mean, this is how I learned to do all this. And in case some of you guys are wondering, my condition is called hypophosphatemic rickets. And it really affects the hardness of your bones. And it's a, a severe vitamin deficiency. As quick as you take the vitamins in your body, you're putting them out. So it has created very soft bones. I do have a plate above each knee, below each knee, and above each ankle. So I mean, I just wanna show people that you can get out and do stuff like this. You can work on stuff. You can get out and enjoy yourself. It's a little harder and you have to put a little more effort toward it, but you can get out and enjoy yourself. This is the little John Deere LX277. Got a 17 horsepower. Um, I can't remember what engine is on this thing. It's a V-twin. I think it's a Kawasaki as well. Hold on, I'll uncover it. We'll see. And guys, I am working hard to try to get to where I don't need the cane to walk. But it's a long, hard path. See, this engine right here caught on fire. I got this for free, too. It caught on fire. And it is a K-Series engine. I think K-Series was a Kohler, or Kawasaki one. I think it was a Kohler though. But it, um, 17 horse V-twin, it caught on fire and burnt the front cover off of it. I will be getting parts for this, because unfortunately, it sat for so long before I got it. By the way, this is about the only lawnmower I've ever seen that had its own computer board. It sat for so long, the fuel line rotted on it. And this mower does work, run, drive, cut, and everything. The only issue I had with it, I think may have been caused by the fuel line, was it wouldn't idle all the way up. It stayed at a very low idle, even if you put it at full idle. And I think the fuel line was causing it to get some air in it, causing that. But it does need some carburetor adjustment, because I did do some work on the carburetor when I got it. But I had to take the whole body off of it just to get to the fuel line. And the fuel line goes into the top of the tank right here. It goes all the way down along under the body and out in the engine bay. So that one took me a minute to figure out. But I think it was, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six bolts and that body come off. Six bolts and two pins. And the body come off. I mean, this is a good mower too, guys. I just got to get it cleaned up and take care of it. Get a little work done to it. And guys, if you'd like to see more videos on this one too, let me know. I'll put them up. I don't mind. I'd like to hear you guys' feedback. I want to hear what you guys think about everything I'm doing, how the videos are going. And I do apologize. I do have the sniffles. My nose is running. And like I said, I'm still recovering. I'm getting there slowly. This is the deck for the orange mower on the inside of the shop. And I did get a tiller this year. Got it for 20 bucks. It runs. But the pulleys have so much rust on them they can't spin freely so i'm gonna have to clean the pulleys off but i have to get the back tire off and the back tire off is rusted onto it so we're gonna get on that one as well we're gonna try mr tarot fixes all mr pterodactyl his little uh heat and quench trick when it comes to removing rusted on objects and we'll see how that works because i think i've got enough gas in my acetylene torches to make that work but these are the two classics right here that's a beautiful picture ain't it guys and guys like i said i know this video has been mostly talking but like i said we're still trying to cover right now recover right now so i'm not doing a whole lot 
but I do plan on getting another video out soon and uh, it should be up within the next couple of weeks I've got a tire I need to put on my rodeo which you can see sitting over there and um, I'm gonna show you a redneck way to take and break the bead on a tire if you don't have a tire changer or don't want to go to a tire shop I'm gonna show you how to break the bead without taking it to a tire shop and uh, here's a view from the front door like I said guys daughter helped me put the lights up and my daughter helps me with a lot of these videos and you guys will see her on here from time to time or hear her talking in the background she's my little sidekick and she helps me with everything and um, the flat panel light back there got that for 20 bucks cheap so see I mean I'm doing things cheap as I can guys it's just gonna take me a little bit but uh not that I really have to explain to you guys but I try to keep you guys informed on everything that's going on we also have a wheel here that we're gonna paint for my trailer I think it's a uh, galvanized wheel but I want to paint it make it look better because I have one silver wheel that's painted in like a chrome silver color I want to make that one match but all right guys that's it for today at two eagles we're gonna end this one here and like I said guys whoever watches this I'm gonna try to get another video out in the next couple weeks and mr. John Gearman once again buddy I hope I'm saying that right I hope this helps you out if you have any more questions on it don't don't be afraid to ask man I don't mind I don't mind helping anybody that's gonna work on something you guys have a wonderful week and thank you all for viewing Thank you for spending another afternoon with Two Eagles Garage.